Um, and hopefully this is at least some of your uh, first efforts into Google Hangouts. Uh, the second reason we use Google Hangouts is because they incorporate both social networking and collaboration tools. And we know that most of us are just too busy with the day-to-day -day routine to kind of play with new technology or at least spend dedicated time with it. So this is an opportunity to kind of kill two birds with one stone, um, learn some good information, and learn how to use some of these online collaboration tools. So we hope you'll find that uh, not only the topics uh, and information presented to you today are useful, but that the sessions also help you get more comfortable with this form of online interaction. We ourselves are continuing to experiment with the Lunch and Learn sessions as an opportunity to find better ways of communicating and collaborating with the ATSU community and beyond. Uh, so it is a public session. Hopefully through these sessions we will discover better ways to build virtual community, share more ideas, and evolve our geographically separate campuses into a cohesive and connected learning organization. So to make these sessions more interactive, we really want you to experiment uh, with us by participating in the session. And participation is easy. Uh, for those of you who've been here before, remember you can add your comments to the chat room. And what we mean by the chat room is simply the comment area for this event on Google+. So it's kind of the area right below the video window. And I think it says add a comment or something like that underneath it. So go ahead and just type in your own version of Hello World or I'm here into that area. Don't worry, you can't break anything. Sometimes it takes a few seconds for all of the posts to show up, so be patient. Uh, but we do have people monitoring the chat area, and we'll try and include any comments, ideas, or questions that we get uh, from that area into the session. We really encourage you to ask questions, share your opinions, post thoughts, or throw the virtual tomatoes by using that comment box below the Google Plus Hangout video area. So also for today, we're going to extend a little bit from our last session, and we'll use Twitter to try and monitor uh, comments. So use the hashtag pound, A-T-S-U-L-L, -L, so pound at soul. And if you have a Twitter account um, and you want to share comments that way, go ahead and send them in uh, that way. Um, ideally, the comments will help us broaden the discussion and then uh, add some healthy and hopefully fun variety around today's topic, which um, should be exciting. We've got with us today uh, to talk about uh, Google and some of the uh, Google Apps uh, tools, and there are lots of them, and we could spend entire sessions on any one of them probably. So we're going to go through them relatively quick quickly. But uh, to my, I believe it's my left, yes, I'm actually pointing right, but it's to my left. As you look at it, Dustin Usher. Um, so Dustin's going to kind of help guide us through the session today. And uh, then Gene is to my right. This is harder than it looks. And uh, Gene just kind of helps us monitor the questions, and uh, she'll uh, bring in some uh, comments and, and whatnot from the session as well. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dustin and, and ask him a little bit about the difference between Gmail and Google Apps, because there's some confusion between those two. We use them kind of interchangeably, but maybe start there, Dustin. Alrighty guys, as Brian said, my name is Dustin Usher. I work over at the uh, Mesa campus in Arizona. And basically the confusion comes in that Google Apps with without a space is basically a bundle of Gmail, calendar, sites, and documents that uses our uh, at ATSU uh, email address. And Google Apps with a space, actually Google Applications, are called products and that's going to be like the Google Plus, Tasks, or Picasso Web Albums, and YouTube, and whatnot. So that's the basic difference in the confusion when people say Google Apps. It can mean one of two things, Google Apps, with or without a space, talking about products, or actually the bundle of Gmail, Calendar, and Drives. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm going to just, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen with you guys so you guys can see what I'm doing and going through. So let me go ahead and get that set up here real quick. Good. So as Dustin shares his screen, I kind of say it at the top, but everyone uh, who has an ATSU account has access to their um, ATSU Google Apps for Education account, and that's uh, what we're going through the first part of today. We'll actually do a couple more sessions to talk about some of the other tools. Um, but we'll start out with Gmail since that's the one that uh, typically is the most widely used. Okay, C can everybody see my screen over there? Brian and Gene, how's it look? 
It looks fine, Dustin. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started, guys. First off, I want to say that <laughs> Gmail works in any browser, so that's one of the pluses about that. Um, and also, you know, some some get interference, some other emails get interference, but what's good about Gmail is it works in Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, whatever you want to use. One thing I would like to mention though here at ATSU, we do recommend using Firefox just because it's compatible across the board with all of our uh, programs. So the first thing I want to bring out is a little hint that some people are keyboard users and some people are mouse users. So there's actual shortcut. It's a, if you hit shift question mark, it actually uh, brings up the shortcut list. And basically, you can do everything by the keyboard if you want to. You can go to your inbox, you hit G, then I, um, thread list selection, navigation, application. I know a lot of people that are really quick with the keyboard, they tend to want to use this and use this idea of the, of the shortcut menu. And I you have love to that shortcut. And I don't know if that exists on some of the other products either, where it's shift question mark, but that is really nice. It definitely comes in handy, especially for those that are you know, have the keyboard down, don't feel like moving over to the user mouse, they can just go right through it. Okay, and you actually have to set that up. There's a setting that we'll go through here pretty soon to show you where that uh, is to enable the shortcuts, the keyboard shortcuts. So, first of all, I want to show you some settings here that a lot of people don't see the display density here. You can make it comfortable, cozy, compact, and basically you can see it kind of stretches out the screen and kind of shortens the emails up like that. See how it's really compact now? It's a nice little option there to give you some space or to view more emails at once. Personally, I like to use Comfortable. And also in there we have uh, themes. You can see mine has a mountain background. Um, have all these themes in here. Classic themes and whatnot. Just something to make it more you know, personal to you and what you want to see. All right, let's go start getting into the, the meat over here in the settings. Basically, I'm just going to take this uh, tab at a time and just point out some key uh, areas that you guys should be aware of. The first one I want to point out here in the general is the uh, conversation view here. So basically, when you get an email and it has just as it says here the same topic or whatever, it kind of compiles them into one. And some people don't like that. Some people like it in a separate, not grouped up like that. So you can actually turn that off if you want or turn it on, just whatever your preference is. Uh, this is some basic. See, here's the keyboard short one that I was talking about here. So you can turn this on or off. And I like having mine on just in case. Another thing I want to bring out here is I know there was um, a while back people were getting frustrated at the, the double dash it was right there above your name or whatever and you actually have the option to put your signature above that so it shows up in all the emails and is not cut off by that double dash okay let's go ahead and go to labels okay this is actually going to be a, a long a longer section here because labels is used basically Gmail is like flat. In other words, there's no hierarchy. Everything gets labels and that's, that kind of creates the hierarchical uh, inbox setting. But basically every email gets in gets a label attached to it, whether it's inbox, trash, uh, you make labels yourself on the side over here. Um, it basically gets that label and you can use these to actually search through your box and just make it easier to find things. And what I want to show you, since we're talking about that now, is how to use that. So basically, if you come up here and you maybe, I'll show you, as soon as we get this done, I'll show you a PowerPoint that has a bunch of the search options. But if you put from, colon, basically it gives you some options here. You can put from me, of course, you know, Jean, my boss, I get a lot from her. And you can put whoever it's from and, and, and do a search like that to make it really quick and easy because a lot of times people get caught up um, scanning through their email and sometimes they're just hundreds of them you know because they just get so many emails this is a quick way and you can do it by subject I mean you can do it by uh, if carbon copied you know uh, blind copied and so forth so forth 
actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over some shortcuts uh, to the screen so you can check them out and see some of them available. As you can see here, the from that I use, the to, the subject. Uh, one that I really want to show you is the has attachment. This is going to be a good one, and I'll show you how that works here in a sec. Let me just move over the screen now. So, if you put in has colon attachment, basically this is going to bring up all your emails that have an attachment with it. And what's good about that is you can come down here to the bottom and see how much you are using. So, I got 0.5 gigabytes of 25 gigabytes, but a lot of people that are doing a lot of attachments back and forth, they're usually getting those attachments and they're saving them uh, to their desktop or their drive or wherever. And then technically they can just go through and then get rid of the emails with the attachments and then it'll free up a lot more space in their actual mailbox. So that has attachment search feature, a real nice feature. Okay. So let's go ahead and talk about the chat feature on the left hand side since that ties right in with what we're talking about here. Uh, let me go back to my inbox. Sorry about that. So we can see that my chat is on the left hand side over here. And there's actually some labs that can actually move that over here to the to the right hand side or just like I said, it's basically personalizing it how you your look and feel how you want it to look. But there is also a Google Talk feature, and that's actually downloadable, and it's separate. It's not in browser like this, this chat is, but it's actually a separate application, and it's kind of quick because if someone else has the Google Talk, you can send over quick images or quick files if you want to, just a quick file transfer if you need to. And the, the labs in here that we'll talk about a little bit later, there's a lab in there that lets you move it to the right or left, whichever you prefer. Okay, let's go ahead and continue on. Let's see here. Something that I wanted to point yeah. out here. Oh, I don't know how many people are using the, the chat functionality right within their Gmail system, but um, just from us who work on both campuses, if, if you're a faculty who's off campus or if you are an admin or staff person who has um, peers on both campuses, um, it saves a ton of time to have it right there and it'll pop right out. It's nice. Definitely. Okay, so here on the inbox setting, this is kind of a nice little feature because you can have classic, which is the way I have it set up, where they're just all, all my emails are just grouped up into one. You can put important first, so the ones that come in that are actually starred will be up there, unread first. Um, these are actually flagged, I'm sorry. These ones are starred that you starred yourself. And, and then you got a priority inbox also. So you can just kind of, again, the thing about Gmail is you can really personalize it how you want it to look and look and feel, you know, how, how you prefer. <clears throat> One thing to tell them about here is um, where you go into the different uh, inbox types, if you, if you choose something like important first, Google actually has algorithms that it uses to try and determine which messages it thinks are important for you. And you can help train it. So there's a little icon that you can uh, highlight to tell uh, Google that this is an important message, either because of who it came from or some of the keywords in the content. But it, I have to say it does a pretty darn good job of getting my important messages um, up into the, the primary inbox. And then I kind of have a section down below where there's everything else. Um, so that really helps filter. There's a lot of ways to filter. That's a good one. Okay, thank you for that, Brian. Let's see, and then the accounts here. So the thing I wanted to talk about the accounts, there's two uh, important things here. This one is kind of just a just a side note. It makes it real easy to to add like a, a third party, like a Yahoo account or a Cox account here. And so you can just have this be like your centralized, you know, email where you just log into here, you get all your email, and you can just organize things through here. And when we talk about um, multiple inboxes, we'll we'll discuss how you can just filter your Yahoo over there or and whatnot to have that inbox separate. And also this feature right here is so this grant access to um, your account. This is a proxy setting where you can actually give someone 
access to your account. So if I wanted to give, say, uh, Gene Arnold access to my account, you type in their email there and say you're going to be out of the office, especially for managers if they have somebody monitoring their, their emails for you know specific business reasons. They put in their email address there and they give them the access so they can view those and look after their emails. Okay, the filter kind of goes along with the, the labeling. As I said, every everything has a label, and you can actually have more than one label uh, on a, an email that comes over if you want to. But this filter is nice because a lot of folks, you know, sometimes are getting messages are getting through they don't really want to. I know this may sound kind of silly, but I have seen this before and dealt with this that some people, you know, they're getting emails from maybe say some Viagra, you know product or whatever that they're just getting signed up for something a while back or whatever. But this, you can put the subject matter in there that you don't want and you can create the filter and then you can actually say what you want to do, delete it or any any of these options. You can you know skip the inbox for that one you probably want to delete or anything you're getting, you feel you're getting spammed by with anybody. You can delete it um, and other things you can if you're getting other important emails, you can also set up a good filter where you can um, assign it to a, a label, you know, and you always want to go in there and check that label that you have set up, that you have the filter set up to. Okay, let's get back over to the settings. Okay, that was filter, so forwarding and pop IMAP. So basically this, uh, a lot of people use this feature for, uh, they really like to use Microsoft Outlook as their email client so they can click on here add their forwarding address which would be their Outlook account and then it would send their emails so they can use their Outlook as their centralized location. Personally I'm not too big on Outlook. I mean I like handling everything with, within Gmail and having all the other features it has, Drive and whatnot there, but it all comes down to personal preference. Um, and these these features here, the POP and the IMAP, they're for setting up um, access to uh, your mobile accounts for your cell phone or your iPad. You have to make sure that these are enabled and then you click down here on the uh, configuration instructions and it gives you uh, whatever mail you have and it actually walks you through these and it actually gives you a little bit of explanation of what they are and it basically they're, they're really nice steps on how to set it up so you can get all your email on, a, on your mobile device. Hey, Dustin. Yes, sir. Um, it's, it looks like from the chat that your resolution is pretty um, small for most people. Can you just pump up your resolution? You know, I don't know if you can do it right with the browser. I know in Chrome it's just uh, Control Plus, and then you can try and uh, yeah, zoom me, a little bit see. more. Let's see what we got here. I know it'll make it a little tougher for you, but it might help for other people to be able to see it. Yeah. How's that, guys? Is that better? I think I think that'll be a little bit better for people. We'll try it and see. Thanks much. Okay. Okay. So let's see here. So the IMAP, yes. So that's for your mobile devices and set it up. And we provide instructions here too through the Gmail site. Sometimes a little bit different, but if you do have any issues, I mean, you can definitely call us and we get that set up there for you. Uh, chat. That's what we were we were kind of going through. But here's some some nice features to, for setting up your chat and making sure you have the uh, the right device set up and you can use the menus and the microphone and the speakers to get those all set up. Okay. One thing I wanted to touch on was this web clips here. This is basically this shows up at the top up here and I'll show you how I have and you can actually filter those out to what you want, but you can see at the top up here where it has this is basically where your web clips pop up. So you can click on something interesting and you can actually set that up to for what information you want, apparently, if you're like CNN getting a, a news clip or something from there, it'll pop up there. Now, the the labs feature is a very, very personalized feature, is where you can really get involved and really change things around how you want. And at the top, it lists the uh, labs that you have enabled. So I have the can responses, default text styling. Uh, who doesn't like extra emoji, right? So I can send over nice little designs and whatnot. 
The one I wanted to talk about though was the inserting images. A lot of people don't know that if you enable this lab, it allows you to insert the image into Gmail. By default, Gmail doesn't allow you to insert images, but by enabling this lab, um, you can insert an image. Another thing that we'll talk about here just in a sec is the multiple inboxes that's allowed with this uh, lab enabled, and it allows you to really um, separate different emails from different folks and have them viewed right there on the side if you'd like to. But as we can see, there's a there's a bunch of labs they they offer here, and you know, going through these and setting them up and just really, as I as I mentioned before, just personalizing it to see how you want. You want Google Maps preview. Uh, there's just so much, so many labs there you can just enable and mess around with and get a feel for. Yeah, that might be a good comment to invite people to add in to the, the chat area is, what's your favorite lab? Because um, I know there are people who really like some and find them very useful. So if, if you're out there watching and you've got a favorite Google lab, put that in there, and that'll help the other people watching the session too. Yes, yes, definitely. Okay, we went over a theme. So here's the uh, the multiple inboxes that I want to discuss with you. Basically, this is just something that you you put the search query. Well, I just put Jean Brown, which is my boss. So then that keeps all of her all the emails associated with her on the right hand side. And I'll show you that now. So as you can see, here's the label Jean, and they're all searched to Jean. So it keeps hers all right here visible, so I can have quick access to them instead of having to do a search for them. My search is already done for me. I created the created that kind of like inbox feel for it. And we have the, uh, and as you can see, I mean, you can, you can add the five different uh, labels over here. And then they can appear on the right hand side or below it if you want. You just got to pick the, the bottom here and what you, what you prefer and what you want. Okay, let's see here. Another thing I wanted to, sh to talk to you about was the uh, boomerang feature. Let's go ahead and look at that here really quick. So if you install this boomerang, basically you can schedule an email to be sent later um, as a reminder or something. Say you have, uh, I know you have access with, you know, setting up stuff on calendar or whatnot, but this is a, a quick little feature where you can set up an email to be sent at a certain time if you want to, to maybe your boss or, or someone you have an appointment with. Just also, with the uh, with the calendar appointment coming up in you, you'll, you can send emails to people and schedule them for later. That's kind of a handy feature. I think Brian, you use this one, don't you? Yeah, I do. I, I just installed it maybe a week or so ago, but um, there are lots of times when I, I want to say something or respond to someone, but I don't necessarily need to do it right away. And so I'll use this, and what it does is in your email, it'll add a couple of extra boxes down below send, and I think it says send and send at a future date or something like that, send later maybe, and you just click on that and then you can set the time. It's, it's really a nice, nice feature. The free version gives you uh, the ability to send up to 10 messages at a later time per month, um, and then there's a pay-for version that I, I assume is unlimited. Um, for me, 10 is more than enough per month. Very nice, very nice little feature. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into uh, contacts now and see what we can do with those. There's so many features in here that allows you to do um, about adding contacts, and this really ties in with the uh, the Google Plus and the profile that we're going to talk about here in just a, in, in a little bit. And how you can just personalize it and have, I mean, you can create as many circles as you want, which also transfer over to the to the Google Plus, everything's just tied in into, into one area, you know what I mean? Well, not quite. I mean, I don't think contacts and circles are quite as integrated as they will be in the future. Um, today you have them kind of side by side, so you've got your contacts in the area above and then your circles in the area below. Eventually, I would like to see those two come together so that you just have the, per, the uh, uh, an individual person or contact in one place rather than in the two. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not sure I followed the thinking yet. My guess is it's just Google um, taking small steps to get us there. Okay, I see. Thank you for that. Okay, two things that I wanted to bring up here, or a few things actually, and actually the context was the import and export feature. So a lot of folks will have their contacts in another uh, in another area, say, and for we'll go back to the Outlook example again. They'll have a bunch of contacts in there they want to bring over, and they can actually 
uh, import those into their uh, into their Gmail here, and then they'll have all their contacts they had over there, or they can export these into another program as well, which makes it really handy. So you have all your contacts the same around the board. And then also this one, find and merge duplicates. This is really handy because I know a lot of folks will come into the office and they'll have they'll sync over their accounts and all of a sudden they have two two or three contacts for the same person and it just it just makes it a mess and then they're you know deleting them singly like that and it just takes a long time and um, this is a great feature to get rid of those duplicates and also this uh, restore contacts feature is is very handy you can set this up however you want so say you you deleted one you didn't want to or you didn't know what happened you can actually restore your contacts from a different time period you know yesterday or a week ago or you can even set up a, a custom you know up to a to a 30 day to a 30 day limit so that's a really handy feature if you erase somebody and you can't find somebody that you had in there all righty so let's go ahead and get into um, our Google profiles now but first of all I want to kind of have uh, Brian talk about where Google is actually going with the profile and how they're integrating that with everything and what they're trying to accomplish by that. Yeah, I, I think profiles are, are probably one of the biggest, um, most important features that we need to talk about for Google+. It's really the idea of your uh, presence on the web in an area that is connected to all of your search information and recommendation information. So it's kind of like a public presence on the web. Today we've got lots of profiles in different tools. So pretty much any tool that you go to or any um, service that you go to has a place where you can put your account and your name and information, um, put, post a little picture, um, but none of them are centralized. And I think what Google's trying to do with their uh, profile in Google Plus is create a centralized place that people can put information about themselves there as a public presence on the web. And I think Dustin's going to go through some of the settings on there, but the nice thing about this is you can share as much or as little about yourself as you want. Um, and really for us as an institution, I think it's important to have our profiles there and we can share that information only at the institutional level. So there's an option, I, I think Dustin will probably walk through it, um, where it, you, you can choose just ATSU as the share parameter. So only people with an ATSU.edu email account can see that part of your profile. Um, so from an internal standpoint, there's no sense in us building systems to do this. We actually have the system right here. really helps us get to know one another. You can use it to share research interests, um, teaching interests, um, what committees you're on, all, all kinds of things. I think it's an area we really need to explore a little bit more. Yes, it's a very, very good point. Yeah, so as Brian said, let's go ahead and get into some of, some of the things you can do in here. So if you go into edit your profile, uh, here's what Brian was talking about, how you can you can customize it. And basically, you know, you can put in your phone, you can put who you want to share it with. You can make it public. Here's what Brian was talking about, AT still, your circles, only you. You can put a custom filter in there. Um, so you, as he was saying, you can really customize it and really keep private what you want private and then public what you don't care about people seeing. You can make it public and whatnot. So that's a real nice feature and really, you know, customizing it how you want. Um, and that's for instructors especially it's important because what Google's doing more and more is they're trying to validate content by including the author of that content. So if you're an instructor and you post, um, you know, maybe a journal article that you've had published um, under your profile and you attach it to your profile, when someone does a search in Google and that journal article comes up and now it can connect to your profile. So someone who's interested in that same topic can now learn more about you and connect with you. Um, I, I think there's a lot of potential for this. Definitely, definitely. Good, good point. And, uh, okay, so one thing I wanted to kind of touch on also um, with the profile is what we talked about earlier was about Google products, which would be talked about more in our, our later Lunch and Learns. I just wanted to, to touch on it, though, is about really personalizing things for you. If you, if you click on your picture over here, and I just do a just quick 
go to privacy or whatever, you can kind of go over here and you can go to what we called what we talked about earlier is Google Applications, which are called products by Google. And it basically lists products that are available that you can actually download and sign up for. Like a good one right here is Google Tasks, where you can really like manage things and have like a little task list. Uh, mobile, you know, calendar, you can have it set up to go across the board to all your mobile devices. And when you're logged into whatever computer you may be logged into, it's a real handy feature to keep things nice and organized uh, throughout the day. It's really quick. Let's see here. What else do we have over here? And another big one that people also sign up for is the YouTube one where they can actually, what we're doing right now, or this is going to be stored on our YouTube uh, uh, access point through our through our Gmail here where we store all of our lunch and learn videos. Um, Google Sites people use a lot. This is this is really handy because you know you can set up your design your your website and whatnot. But these are all uh, products they offer that we're gonna go in more depth on uh, in one of the later lunch and learns. Let's see here. Brian, can you think of anything that um, I should expound on or that I missed that you thought of? No, I wish I could. I'm doing too many things. It's it's too hard for me to multitask on a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I've discovered that uh, you know there are some advantages to being in your own office and having multiple screens and um, knowing the key combinations a little bit better. Definitely. No, I, I, um, I guess I'm looking to the comments area. Are there other things that people would like us to talk about? Um, or, or uh, hints that you can do. What we're really trying to do is just give you lots of different hints, and then um, if you need help, you can talk to the help desk about them or call Dustin um, or post something on this uh, chat thread, and we'll try and help you through the, the thread. Um, so there are lots of ways that we can get into more detail, but the idea here is just to kind of um, uh, throw them out there so that people can see them. Gene, are you seeing anything in the chat? I've posted a couple of favorites. Corey Louders is canned response. Missy Seidel is the attachment reminder. I have to agree with her on that one. It's important to me. <laughs> and so, uh, so let's explain those a little bit. Those, okay. those are both good. Uh, canned, canned response is another one that I use a lot too. Um, basically, it allows you to pre-type uh, or pre-program, um, I guess, a response that's common. So one way that I use it is for um, my footer. So I've got a, a nice footer that has a little picture of me in it and, and lots of things, but it's kind of overwhelming to send on every message. But for people that I'm just introducing myself to or that don't know me well, I can go in and rather than having to recreate that text all of the time, I can just go into canned responses, I click on footer or something like that, and then it will bring up that text and put it right in the message and I can go on. So if you've got a common response to people um, based on you know the type of workflow that you have, it's a great tool for um, standardizing on consistent uh, texts, consistent messages that you want to send back to people. That's canned responses. And then, Gene, you want to talk about attachments? Every Attachments should just be there automatically. That's an awesome one. Yes, attachments is if you've mentioned in the body of the email, like please see attachment below or something like that, and then you forget to attach it, a screen will come up and say, did you mean to send this without the attachment or something like that. So it helps you not be embarrassed by sending something, mentioning the attachment. I, I really do like that one. And then, Brian, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just reading these as they came in. Ted Wendell, where is Boomerang? Actually, the Boomerang you got to download, and the, the web address, if you just did a quick search for Boomerang for Gmail, I don't think you can try putting in the boomeranggmail.com, but otherwise, you can do a quick search for uh, uh, Boomerang. Gmail and it'll bring it right up and you can install it right here with the, uh, the red button. Yeah, and I think I added the marketplace link to it too in the okay. chat session. 
great. All right, I'm going to go on up from Tracy, the undo send. She likes that little quick 10 seconds you get. <laughs> so one of the complaints we got early on was um, for people who are really old time and uh, remember Novell had an option where you would send a message, realized, oh shoot, I didn't want to say that. You could unsend it or, or retrieve that message. Um, Google never really had that feature until they put it in as a Google Lab. And now I believe if you enable that lab, you might get maybe 10 seconds is the most. Um, but it's enough time where you click the send button or you hit it accidentally, you can retrieve that message and save yourself a little bit of grief. Okay, then we have a question from Bill Combs. Are we able to make our atsu.edu email the default email on our computer? so that when we click email links it opens our ATSU Gmail. Okay, that's actually a good question. We do get that a lot. And I think that there is a, a, an app or a plugin that we actually have to add a, a notifier, a Google notifier or something like that to actually set that up. Um, I think it came up a couple times before, but uh, tell Bill, I can, uh, I, can get, I can contact you with that to really dig into that because I think it's only come up once or twice where people wanted to do that instead of having you know, the generic Microsoft app come up or whatever. But I think there is a way to get around that. I will get back with you on that though. Okay, I'll go on. The person that Brian called old time, not that she's insulted at all, <laughs> is uh, she said, I also like the unread message icon. A little number appears on the tab listing the number of unread messages in your inbox. I can keep track of new messages without viewing my email account. That is a very good one. And then uh, Amy Duvall has a question. Can you keep a personal Gmail account from separate from our ATSU accounts? Yes, that's a good question. Actually, what you can do is does she does a I guess the question would be is if you want to forward your Gmail to your ATSU, how we would do that is we would use the, uh, the multiple inbox and then we could actually filter the emails from, for example, um, let's go ahead and just go look at it real quick here. So if you go to the settings and the multiple inbox, so for me, my personal one would be dasher at atsu.edu. You can label whatever you want. And if you are forwarding your emails from your Gmail account over to your ATSU account, um, you'll see right here how you can see the ones from Gmail coming here and they're from, uh, let's see here, let's go back. Well, these are the emails from my DA Usher personal account here. So you can keep them separate if you want to. You just got to put the little label in there and use that inbox, the multiple inbox lab. And you can keep those separated that way. Okay, did that ask, answer your question? Yeah, Amy, Amy there's, there's actually a lot of ways that we can do that. So um, you, you can set up multiple accounts. Um, so for me, I have probably a dozen different Gmail apps accounts. Um, and you can, there are some tools that you can use to move from one account to another. Uh, if you go in the upper right hand corner, I believe, of your email and uh, click on the little down, down arrow picture, um, you can, at least for me, there's an option to add an account. You can add multiple accounts in there. Um, that's one way to switch back and forth. If you're using Chrome, um, there's some, some tools that you can use to uh, set up different icons for different uh, accounts. And then each account can set up with its own browser session. So you move from browser session to browser session. Um, there, are, there are a variety of different ways you can skin that cat. Sorry to any cat lovers out there. <laughs> That looks like the end of the questions. All right, good. All right, then let's um, let's keep the uh, chat session uh, alive. I think Dean uh, Mog put in a nice link. We we've started a playlist so that people can get back to any of the old lunch and learns. 
Um, that's in the thread as well, so you can go to that for any of the recorded versions of previous sessions. Um, and then make sure that you add any questions that you have on Gmail um, or contacts or profiles. If you haven't set up your Google Plus profile, I'd really encourage you to go in and at least put a picture in there um, and, and maybe put in a, a few other parameters as well. Um, you know, where, where you live, kind of big picture, so it shows up with a little map. Um, what your interests are, uh, research interests in particular, I think are important to have in there. Um, so I think that'd be another action item to take out of this session. Uh, and then uh, circles. Circles are very powerful tools for um, filtering uh, information on particular topics. So if you go in and you can use your Google Plus account to do a search on any topic that you're interested in, um, it will bring back comments from different people about that same topic. Um, and you can use circles then to add those people to a circle with that topic name. And then you can filter all of those comments. It's a great way to track for things like um, educational technology, um, swimming, a variety of, of different topics that you're interested in. I would like to add that the help desk is there, or here rather, to help you with any of these tasks. So feel free to call us and we can help you with anything that we've discussed or uh, let you know if you can't do anything that you dream up that you'd like to do. All right. I think with that, then, we'll, uh, we'll call this session a wrap. Um, we have another session in two weeks, which I believe is on the help desk and kind of reintroducing the help desk pe to people. Um, so I think that'll be a good session. And then I think we're back after that with session two of, of Google Apps. Um, sorry, Dustin, I know when, when we did the, uh, um, the rehearsal that we thought that we were going to have too much content, and I think what typically happens is we get excited and we start talking faster and we go through stuff a, a little bit faster than we do in the rehearsal. Um, so we'll, we'll work on that. If people have things that they wanted to see that they didn't, please let us know, um, and we'll tack on some additional sessions uh, in the future for specific needs. All right, great. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks a bunch, Dustin. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you.